women, particularly corporate moms, are exhibiting their staying power in corporate America like they haven't had before. According to the Pew Research Center, 50 years ago, only 34% of women with children under the age of 18 worked outside of the home, and now that number stands at 55%. Meanwhile, 72% of women with children under the age of 18 now work in some form of corporate America, either full or part-time. And if you spend any time with Alison Jackson, you know that she's passionately dedicated to helping corporate moms balance it all when it comes to maintaining an active and healthy lifestyle. She's an entrepreneur and a competitive figure competitor who wants corporate moms to value themselves, their work, and their fitness. She joined me this week to tell me why this mission is so important to her. I'm Kevin McShann. Let's have this conversation. Jackson says her love of fitness is a family affair and she has her father to thank for her undeniable passion. She began our conversation by detailing the bond with her dad. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, when I was probably my preteens, I would read my dad's muscle fitness magazines and always was... Um, just amazed at how people could transform their body through diet and nutrition. So that was always in the back of my head as a bucket list item, right? I was like, I want to be one of those people. Um, but I, you know, I was always into the athletics. I played field hockey in high school and college. Um, I ran marathons. I taught fitness classes. I was a personal trainer. Fast forward to having gotten married, had two kids. I'd always in the back of my mind still had that, that goal of wanting to be a bodybuilder. So in 2012, I actually competed and I thought it would just be a one and done bucket list item. And it launched this whole passion that I, I, I had always had, but never really knew what, what it could be. So um, since then, I just I started coaching other people. People kept asking me, how are you competing every year and, and dropping weight and getting stage ready? What, you know, what are you eating? How are you working out? So that's kind of what spawned Allison Jackson Fitness. Jackson says, what really ignites her fire of inclusivity is the fact that she gets to help corporate moms balance it all while also prioritizing their personal fitness. And she says that she has a personal connection with the people that she trains because as a mother herself, she's in the same boat. Yeah, absolutely. So as a mom myself and as a working mom, so I have a full-time corporate job and I do uh, fitness and coaching as my side hustle. Um, I know the struggle that moms go through with balancing work and kids and things they're interested in and their self-care. And for moms, it always seems that we fall kind of to the back of the line. Um, so I really, my, my mission is, you know, inspiring and helping people to prioritize their health and self-care so they could be at their best because not only is it important for the individual, but they're role models for their families, for their colleagues, for, for everyone around them. So I think it's so, so important that people really prioritize uh, their nutrition and exercise. As a competitive figure competitor, I was curious to note how Jackson develops the right mindset in order to be 
successful. Yeah, so it's funny. It's taken me, I'm 47. It's taken me about 40 years to realize that it is really wellness is a three-legged stool. It's mind, body, and spirit. So while you might be eating healthy and working out, what you're feeding yourself mentally, your mindset um, plays a huge, huge role. And it's important that, you know, self-care is one piece of the puzzle, but self-compassion, how do you talk to yourself? Are you your biggest cheerleader? Are you a good friend to yourself? It's taken me a really long time to realize that. And I think the competitions and preparing and having to have that mental strength um, really, really uh, has taught me so, so much. And I try to instill that in the women I coach as well, that, you know, it's not all about the scale. It's about how you feel. Are you confident? Do you have energy? Are you sleeping well? So mindset is huge. And, and from meditation to breathing, all of that stuff is just as important as eating healthy and exercising. And as a mom yourself, I'm curious how you manage your own life and how, how do you have time to personally connect with yourself as well? Yeah, that's a great question. So I always tell people you either schedule your day or your day schedules you. Um, so I prioritize what's most important for me. And that is I have to work out. I have to work out for at least an hour. And that includes, you know, warming up and a little bit of yoga and stretching and weights. But um, that hour is my time. And that's when I really am able to focus on myself. And it just helps me kind of get set for the day, as well as, you know, some mindfulness at the end of that hour. Um, but that for me is critical. And I always tell people, we all get the same 24 hours, and you either make it a priority or you make it an excuse. It's totally up to you. And I'm curious to know, throughout your journey, uh, as a fitness professional, now what do you think you've been challenged by most professionally and, and personally trying to uh, juggle all of these different hats that you wear? So I think I struggle with what a lot of moms and women struggle with, and that's just guilt, guilt and making sure, you know, am I giving enough to my family? Am I giving enough to my job? Um, and then, you know, am I giving enough to myself? So I feel like you're, you're kind of constantly battling all those demons. Right. Um, and I think it's having grace with yourself. So during, last year during the pandemic, um, I went through yoga teacher training. I was like, Oh, well, how am I going to spend my time stuck at home? Right. And it really changed my life in terms of just how I see things now and, and priorities and time and, you know, that anxiety of always feeling like there's not enough time, there's not enough, you know, time in the day to get everything done. Um, I think it's really stepping back and having grace and realizing it's, it's progress, not perfection. Everyone's kind of battling the same thing. Um, but for me, it's really, again, kind of, I, I've always ha have been so anxiety driven and very type A perfectionist, um, really kind of taking a step back and saying, you know, it's okay to, to mess up and make, make mistakes. That's how we all learn. And I know that you also have a love of running marathons and staying physically fit in that way. And I'm wondering how your uh, uh, personal and professional life has uh, transformed or has a transferable effect for your love of fitness. Yeah, absolutely. That is a, a great question. And um, what I feel uh, fitness has given me the most in terms of kind of transitioning to my career is just this level of confidence, you know, after you've run a marathon, or you've competed and gotten your pro card um, in bodybuilding, you just attain this level of, of confidence that I can do anything I put my mind to, like nothing is unattainable. So I feel like that carries over not only at work, but even, you know, parenting and in my relationship with my husband, um, it just gives you this, this amazing confidence level. And I'm, I'm curious to ask you about uh, marriage and fitness and sort of juggling motherhood as well. How do you think you, you've changed in, in that regard in the pandemic or how have you, you become uh, stronger? Sure. So, you know, the pandemic impacted everybody in different ways. And I know a lot of people were impacted by gyms shutting down. And the gym is a great release for a lot of people. And it was for me as well. That was always how I started my day was at the gym. Um, I'm lucky enough that I've always had a home gym as well. So I just have the basics in my basement. Um, so I've, I've continued to work out. But I think one of the keys is my family really seeing the impact that it has on me 
Um, now my husband, you know, works out in our home gym and my son is working out in our home gym. So it really has that ripple effect. And you're, you're really role modeling behavior that you want all those around you to take on as well from a health perspective. Um, so I think that's been, that's been one, one of the, the great takeaways from the pandemic, if we're able to take any of those away. I'm wondering, I'm wondering uh, also your thoughts on uh, the, the effect that fitness and empowerment has for a woman's, uh, uh, the, the way that women sort of view themselves. How do you think fitness is a sense of empowerment for women in terms of owning that as well? Yeah, so I think we've come a long way in that regard. I mean, I know, you know, magazines used to always just show these skinny women and, and a lot of Instagram, you kind of find the same thing, right? It's all about your butt and six pack abs and, um, and that sort of thing. But I really think we're kind of turning, um, pivoting right now into really, how do we feel versus how do we look? So while aesthetics are important, um, I think it's really, you know, how do you feel in your own skin? And I struggled with that for a long time. I mean, when I was younger, I, when I wore a bathing suit, I put a t-shirt over it. Like I didn't want anybody to look at me. I, I really had a horrible body image issues. Um, so I've come a long way to go from that to, you know, competing on stage in a sparkly bikini next to like, you know, five or six other women. So I think, you know, body image is really important. And again, it goes back to that mindset and having a strong mindset and being okay with yourself and who you are and what you're about. Um, I think that all plays a role. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm also uh, curious to ask you your opinion on what is the, the future of the German industries after the pandemic? Yeah, you know, it's really interesting. So I, for one, a lot of the, I'm in New Jersey, a lot of the gyms are starting to open, but a lot of them are appointment only, or you have to work out at a mask, um, which I, I just, you know, you may have to make appointments for so many things these days. I think it, the, the gyms are going to change. I mean, I think in terms of how many people, how much equipment, where they're spaced, um, their, their cleaning process. But I also think the home gyms, the Pelotons, the Tonal, the Mirror, all those, I think you're going to see those go crazy that people are realizing working at home isn't a bad thing. You can still get a great workout. And I know there's people that need that community and that in person, and, and that'll still come into play hopefully at some point. Um, but I really think you're going to see in-home gyms and people taking control of their own workouts. Um, that's going to just skyrocket and continue to. And outside of fitness, because I know that's a big part of your identity, what else do, do you attribute to your own personal identity as a person? What else do you like to, to, to do outside of fitness? All right. So you're going to learn that I'm a huge productivity nerd. I love like try to figure out the fastest, easiest way to get things done, time management, money management. The other aspect what a lot of people don't know is I'm obsessed with the FIRE movement, which is financial independence, retire early. So I, I've been so into that since I was in my 20s. I, most people don't know that, but I'm a little obsessed with personal finance. Uh, well, well, there's nothing wrong with knowing where your money goes, right? <laughs> Absolutely. I took the discussion about inclusivity one step further with Jackson, who says that there's an important correlation between fitness individuals with disabilities and providing them with a sense of empowerment for those who maintain a consistent fitness regimen. Absolutely. I think the same way that um, it builds confidence for those without disabilities. I think exercising, building your strength, being able to do different things, I think it also could build the confidence of those with disabilities just as easily as those without, right? So building your strength, being able to either walk or run further or lift, you know, lift with your upper body more. Um, I think it could be very, very rewarding in that way. And I'm, I'm curious to also know when your when your professional and personal life comes to a conclusion, what do you want your personal legacy to be? 
I want my personal legacy to be inspiring people to really take control of their health. People, I, I, I hope that people look to me as a role model of someone they could aspire to. You know, I feel like I have it all. I feel like I'm the richest person in the world, that I have a wonderful family, a great job, a wonderful business. Um, and I hope other people can look at that and say, you know, I could do that too, or, you know, just be able to take something away. But, but most importantly is just the health aspect. I think that's so critical. With so many moms today on the go, I was curious to ask Jackson for some helpful tips so we can all make sure our moms and the women who are important in our life remain in tip-top shape while also maintaining their own individual passions and desires. Absolutely. So what I tell most people off the bat is to um, download the free app, My Fitness Pal, and just track your food and get an idea of what you're eating every day in terms of calories and then macronutrients. So your protein, carbohydrates, and fats. Get a baseline. And then from there, decide what, you know, you might see your, your sodium is off the charts or your fiber is really low. Um, and then, you know, you're, you're able to tweak it accordingly. And what I tell people is try to incorporate more protein so whatever your goal body weight is, try to eat that in grams of protein. So I'll use myself as an example. Uh, my target is 140 grams of protein. So that's, you know, 30, 35 grams of protein at every meal and snack. Um, as adults, we typically do not eat enough protein. And that is critical for building muscle, staying full. Um, and, and it helps to build a well-balanced diet because a lot, most foods are carbs and fat. Um, it's, it's a struggle to get that protein in. So that, that's what I always tell folks. You want to kind of have a breakdown of 40% protein, 40% carbs, 20% fat. So it's a moderately high protein, low fat diet, totally sustainable. Don't cut out food groups. Don't restrict yourself. Everything could fit in. It's just a matter of everything in moderation. Oh, well, yeah. I, I have to do, do that with apple pie. I'm an apple <laughs> pie guy. So uh, I'm, I'm trying everything in moderation, right? So, That's it. <laughs> so my final question for you is, I'm curious to know, do you, do you have a life motto or a fitness motto that you live by that helps you both in fitness and in life? So I have two. So my first one is progress, not perfection. And my other one that I totally live by in life, fitness, anything is the best is yet to be. Yeah, mine, I have to tell you, is uh, inclu inclusion is the gateway to independence. I always try Ooh. to ensure that everyone has a voice, regardless of ability, regardless of um, um, uh, social or economic standing or, or intelligence level. I always, always think that we all have sort of uh, something to give to the world. So inclusion is the gateway to independence is mine. That is a beautiful one. I love it. And that's, yeah. And Allison, if, if anyone wants to get connected with you, how can they do that? They could visit me at allisonjacksonfitness.com. I'm also on Instagram and Facebook at Allison Jackson Fitness. And I would love to connect with anybody that has more questions. Hey, Allison, I really want to appreciate your, your time this afternoon. And thank you for being here to talk fitness, motherhood, and so much more. Thanks so much for being here. Really enjoyed our conversation. And uh, I want to wish you the best of luck with any future endeavors. Thank you, Kevin.